all good things must come to an end. And yes, that includes the Red Sox seven game win streak. Welcome to the Locked On Red Sox podcast. Happy Friday. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every day. I am your host, Nessence Lauren Campbell, and we're going to talk about how the Angels snapped their 14 game losing streak while also snapping the Red Sox seven game win streak. We're going to discuss how Otani was basically just a one man show. He said, Fine, I will do it myself. Put this game on his back to help lift the Angels to their first win since May 24th. We're going to look at Nick Pavetta and how he did pitch well despite the outcome of the game. And as always, we will end this show on the Mental Health Minute. Let's get to it. You are locked on Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Red Sox ended up losing 5-2 to two on Thursday against the Angels. And like I mentioned in the intro, Otani was just absolutely amazing. He is so fun to watch, and he's been fun to watch since he broke into MLB. He, like I said, he helped snap the Angels' 14-game losing streak. And he, he pitched on Thursday as well as was in the lineup. He limited the Red Sox to just six base runners. He generated 15 swings and misses. So everything was just really, really working for him. He was able to keep the Red Sox off the bases and just really had control of the game, both from a pitching standpoint and an offensive standpoint. He also set a new season high with 100 pitches. And he hit 101 miles per hour on his fastball. That's another new season high for Otani. And as as dazzling as he was on the mound, the Angels were down one nothing in the fifth inning. And Otani hit a two-run home run off Nick Pavetta to give LA a two-run lead that would eventually grow. And they'd never relinquish and help them to a victory. Andrew Velasquez who was 0 for his last 22. You probably wanted this guy at the plate. Then you're thinking, all right, it's just going to be a 2-1 game. The Red Sox absolutely can come back from this. Andrew Velasquez said, I don't think so, and provided the Angels much-needed insurance. And like I said, he was he went 0 for his last 22, and he hit a three-run home run to make it a 5-2 game and eventual win. Otani at the end of the day after his home run and after giving the Angels a lead that would never go away. Otani pitched seven innings. He gave up four hits, one earned run on the night, two walks and struck out six. It's the Angels first win since May 24th. And Alex Cora is just like us, just in awe of what Otani can do, what he can continue to do. And the fact that he can continue to still be a two-way star, a two-way phenom, I think speaks so much to his athleticism and just how rare what he is doing truly is. And after the game, Alex Cora said, obviously to see him hit a home run while he's going out there for seven innings, that's impressive. And as I keep saying, he's the best athlete in the world because to compete at that level on the mound and at the plate the way he does, it's eye-opening. It's unreal. Yes, Yes, Alex Cora, it is unreal. It is so fun to watch him. It's it, like Alex Cora said, it's unreal because he's so good at what he does. And I was very skeptical when Otani first came in the league. I said, there's no way he's going to be able to sustain being a pitcher and being a hitter. He's going to have to choose one. And he said, no, nope, absolutely not I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to prove everyone else wrong. And he's continued to do it. And if you ever get the chance to go see him play live, please do it. It is it's kind of like going to see LeBron James, going to see Tom Brady, and going to see all these incredible athletes play live that we may not get the opportunity to see 5 years, 10 years down the road. I mean, Otani probably 5, 10 years down the road. You never know with Tom Brady, you never know with LeBron James, but at the end of the day, these guys are getting older. They're some of the most incredible athletes of our generation. Go out there, take advantage, and see them play their game. So it only was a matter of time before this win streak came to an end. All good things come to an end. So there was not a lot of offense in this game from Boston, but Nick Pavetta was strong once again. And even though he was credited with the loss, he did record 11 strikeouts through five innings in his Thursday outing. He was riding a five-game win streak heading into Angel Stadium. He looked to be on track to get win number six in a row. 
especially after he escaped a bases loaded jam in the bottom of the second inning. I don't know how he got out of that. Don't really care how. I'm just glad that this game did not get out of hand as early as the second inning. And of course, he's been so strong with Nate Avaldi and Michael Waka because going into Thursday's game, the trio had not allowed an earned run in their last 33 and two thirds innings pitched. And in their last seven starts, they were a combined six and one with a 0.57 ERA. So the odds really were in Nick Pavetta's favor. Just didn't work out because Otani was just absolutely incredible. Andrew Velasquez decided to break his 0-4-22 slump. He was taken out after giving up two walks, and Hirokazu Saramora was the one who gave up the three-run home run to Velasquez, but Pavetta was credited with those runs because he was the one who put them on base. So obviously not good for, for Pavetta's ERA, not good for Saramora's. I don't want to say reputation and not, but not good for his confidence, especially because he was just optioned to Worcester recently and then had to get recalled due to Hansel Robles injury. But with the imminent return of Chris Sale, James Paxton is going to be throwing bullpens again, hopefully this weekend. If not, he's on track to throw them very, very soon. I just, we, we, Jake and I talked about this. We saw a lot of issues come up in this series in the last few games, especially that we saw in the beginning of the season and that's offense. And yes, the bullpen, the bullpen is always going to be an issue until they get a closer and can define some roles for these guys and get some legitimate help. But we've seen the offense. We've seen runners get left on base way too many times. And I mean, a four, three out of four still is not bad for the Red Sox. Of course it would have been lovely to see a four game sweep heading into Friday's three game set against the Seattle Mariners and continuing this West Coast road trip really, really strong. But it wasn't the case. It's unfortunate that Saramora just cannot seem to get it together. And maybe this is just who he is. And this is what's going to happen. The game was not out of reach by any means when he came into the game. He just could not keep the game as close as it was. And yes, the game still was in reach when it was five to two. The offense just couldn't get going. But the game could have been 2-1. Alex Cor is going to Saramora because you could say he trusts him in that situation. Maybe it was, who else do you go? It wasn't a good matchup. But unfortunately, Saramora could not hold the 2-1 lead, gave up the three-run home run to make it a 5-2 game, eventual win for the Angels. But it wasn't all bad for the Red Sox when it comes to the offense. There are some good takeaways to look at when it comes to the offense and in that starting nine. I'll tell you about it in the second segment of Locked on Red Sox after I tell you about LinkedIn because as the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs ho helps you find people you want to interview faster and for free. I found my job with Nesson right on LinkedIn, so I can tell you firsthand, I know it works. Jake also found his job with the Massachusetts Pirates on LinkedIn. So all you have to do is create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile so you can spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and the experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and potentially hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. And did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB for free. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. And we here at Locked On also have a favor to ask you. It's a very important favor. We have put out a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like, maybe what you don't like, maybe what you want to hear more of on Locked On podcast. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take you very long, and everyone that completes this survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Thank you in advance for your help. So even though the Red Sox did lose, and like I said, the offense just was not there, and we can look at three specific players who really stood out for the Red Sox on Thursday, and the first one is Franchi Cordero. 
His production has dropped a little bit of late after he was just absolutely on fire. He had so much success in Worcester, and that finally was translating to Major League Baseball. So it's dropped off a little bit. However, he did show a great play patience with a fifth inning walk, and then he later scored a run in the fifth inning. It was the first run for the Red Sox of the game. And much like I said in the intro, all good things must come to an end. But if he can continue to be consistent and find ways to get on base, find ways to score runs, he's going to be just fine in this lineup. I don't think there's any reason to sit here and chastise him because he's able to get on base and he's able to score runs. And that's what the Red Sox are going to need, especially if this offense is going to go cold for a little while. We do not want that. We want Franchi Cordero walks, Franchi Cordero runs. Of course, we want Franchi Cordero home runs, but we'll take what we can get right now. And also Alex Verdugo and Bobby Delbeck. Now, Jake and I talked about Bobby Delbeck coming in clutch twice against the Angels for the Red Sox. And it's nice to see him continue to be not so much clutch in this situation, but continue to hit the ball well. Verdugo and Dalbeck each recorded an RBI, and that extended Boston's RBI total to 266. That's good for first in the AL East, two more than the New York Yankees. This kind of reminds me, what was it, in 2019 or 2020 when they just could not win games, but they led the the league and run scored it was the most frustrating thing to to see that this Red Sox team just could not string together quality wins or rent wins at all how do you lead your division or the league and run scored but you're not even in a playoff spot baseball is weird that's all I can say and that's why sometimes when you look at stats it doesn't always tell the entire story but nice to see Verdugo and Delbeck I know that Verdugo spoke with Mass Live recently and said that he was frustrated about his season and his average and he's looking at his stats and he's like hell yeah it bothers me this is not who I am so to see him continue to hit the ball drive in runs will definitely boost his confidence and same with Delbeck too you want to see these young guys do well and you don't know what the future holds for Delbeck especially with Tristan Cassis on the way up eventually you know that Tristan Cassis will get the call at some point whether that's this season September or next season when maybe he's a little bit more MLB ready. He is dealing with an ankle injury that has seemed to hinder him a little bit. It seems to be a little bit more serious than the Wu Sox originally thought, but at the end of the day, it's not like he was getting ready to be called up tomorrow by any means, but it definitely does kind of push him back probably a little bit. But as long as Delbeck is producing and making good picks, game-changing picks at first, Red Sox fans can remain patient with Cassis, which I think is incredibly important especially with his development and if he's going to be the future at first base you need to make sure he is ready to go when his name is called but Cassis isn't here Dahlbeck is and that's this is what we have right now and it's nice to see these guys who struggled in the beginning of the season I mean everyone struggled in the beginning of the season but even when the team is down they're trying to get their team back in it. You want to see that from, from Dalbeck and Verdugo and Cordero. You expect it from Martinez, Bogart, Stevers, Story, Hernandez, those guys. But you want to be able to rely on the bottom half of your lineup as well. Kike Hernandez, speaking of, unfortunately, is on the injured list. He has a hip issue that he's dealing with. Alex Cora said he was going to see a hip specialist in New York. At the time of recording, Alex Cora has not met with the media just yet. It's still only 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock on the West Coast, so he has not yet spoken to the media. Hopefully there is a positive update on Hernandez, and all he needs is those 15 days on the injured list. He'll come back, take over that leadoff spot, and be just fine. As always, if we do have a significant update, whether it's good or bad, we will keep you updated here on Locked on Red Sox. So now the Red Sox prepare to take on the Seattle Mariners as they continue their West Coast trip. They are in Seattle now for three games. Rich Hill goes tonight on the mound. He's looking to move to 3-3, three and three, looking to lower his ERA, which is already at 240, so not bad, and looking for his second win in a row. Coming up in our third and final segment of the Locked on Red Sox podcast, as we always do, we're going to end this show with the Mental Health Minute. But first, I want to tell you about Athletic Greens and AG1. Because this is a product that I literally use every day. I started taking AG1 because I wanted more energy in the mornings. Who doesn't want more energy in the mornings? Especially if you have a very hyper shepherd, you need to have all the energy you can when you wake up and be ready to take on the day with them. 
Now I've been on it for a few weeks and I absolutely love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It does have kind of a mild tropical taste and I actually look forward to taking it each morning. So what is this stuff exactly? Just with one scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It's a special blend of ingredients that supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging, all of those things. Like I said, I take it because I wanted more energy in the morning. I even have my fiance taking it now. So we're ready to tackle the day. The second we wake up, I take it right before I have my coffee. Sometimes I don't even need my coffee when I take AG1. And the best part is that it is lifestyle friendly. So whether you eat keto, paleo, you're a vegan, you're dairy free or gluten free, you can have AG1. They contain less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, none of those nasty chemicals or artificial anything and it still tastes good. It supports better sleep quality and recovery, your mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best thing. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science and third-party testing. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every single day. That's it. No need for a million different supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutrition insurance. This episode also is brought to you by betonline.net. Betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup with the Boston Celtics and the Golden State Warriors. The Celtics look to take a commanding 3-1 series lead over Golden State on Friday night at TD Garden. Go check out those odds. Place a bet. The NHL Conference Finals, the Colorado Avalanche, have moved on to the Stanley Cup Final. They are awaiting the winner of the New York Rangers Tampa Bay Lightning Series. The Lightning took a 3-2 series lead on Thursday night. Look to wrap that up on Saturday. So again, check out those odds right at betonline.net. There's also fighting news from MMA and UFC right down to boxing and, of course, Major League Baseball odds. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and so much more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. So, as we always do, we're going to end this show on the Mental Health Minute. And Friday was a very good day for me. I went back to work after a few days off, but it's not even about that. The last week that I had off, it it was wonderful. However, there was one thing that was completely stressing me out. And then it was that I could not get in touch with my wedding venue for the life of me. So I emailed the woman who was our sales coordinator um, two weeks ago. And I asked her some simple questions about the menu, the linens and our wedding rehearsal. And I had not heard back. And so I didn't hear back for a week before I followed up. And I was like, it's, it's wedding season. We're getting married on a beach. Like this is a very popular venue. And again, it's peak wedding season. And I completely understand that you're busy. And our original wedding coordinator got into a serious ski accident in January or February. So I was dealing with our, our sales rep for a little while. And this was you know in January, February. So I emailed our wedding coordinator and I did not hear from her either. So I was like, oh no. So I sent a total of four emails over the course of two weeks, which I don't think is all that bad, but I was stressing internally. It was something that was keeping me up at night. I was like, am I being ghosted by my wedding venue two months from my wedding? I was like, I'm going to have to figure out a new venue for a hundred people. I'm going to have to figure out what to do. I'm going to have to call the the caterer for our rehearsal dinner. It was, when I say I was stressed, I tell you, I was very, very stressed. And on Friday, I finally heard from the venue and it was a very nice woman explaining the whole situation that the two people I had emailed were no longer with the company. She was trying to play catch up with everything. Our wedding coordinator who got into the ski accident is okay, but she decided to take a new job that she can work from home and focus on her recovery. And just seeing the email from the venue itself, I was like, oh, thank God. It put my mind at so much ease so fast, not even from opening the email, just seeing that it was from the venue and being like, sorry for the delay. I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, oh, thank God. But it also was a gentle reminder to myself that 
you never know what what's happening behind the scenes. So now the woman who is the new wedding coordinator for for me and my fiance has who knows how how much catch up she has to do, and who knows how many weddings were just thrown into her onto her plate. And thankfully, we still have a few months, but I'm just trying to tie up loose ends and stay ahead on what we have to do. But just like I said, a very good reminder to just take a deep breath. You don't know what's happening behind the scenes. And you know, you know, the venue was still up and running. It's not like they shut down in the horror stories you hear about some of these, these venues just closing and leaving couples without without a venue weeks, sometimes days before their their big day. So all is well, all is wonderful. You can see my fiance in the back if you're watching on YouTube. And it was just, again, a reminder that you you don't know what anyone else is going through. And just to take a deep breath because everything is going to be okay. Thank you for tuning in to Locked on Red Sox. We will be back on Monday recapping what hopefully will be a successful series against the Mariners. Rate, review, and subscribe to Locked on Red Sox right here on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast is where you can find us. Find us on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox. Me, La 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 Lauren, three laws, Lauren with four R's, and Jake at Jake Iggy. Be sure to check out all the other Locked On shows across the network. If you're a Celtics fan, check out Locked On Celtics as they continue to make their run for Banner 18. Check out Locked On Mariners, Locked On Yankees, Locked On Astros. Everyone does such a great job here. And now that you've made Locked On Red Sox your first listen, head on over to Locked On MLB to make it your second listen. Good friend Sully brings you through his unique perspective of major leaguers, both past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Let's go Red Sox.